Hello everyone, uh, welcome back. Uh, today we will be discussing uh, one of the important questions in the area of natural language processing and the question is uh, why there is a need of converting sentences or words into a vector. So this is one of the important questions that we want to answer and, uh, and the question is why there is a need of converting sentences or words that we normally see in the case of natural language processing into a vector form. One of the prime reasons why we want to do this is to make use of linear algebra that we you know normally see in the area of machine learning we use lot of linear algebra. So one of the prime reasons of converting words and sentences into the vector is like you know so that we can make use of linear algebra and all all the concepts that we have in linear algebra making use of that to interpret the results that is the first uh, you know uh, motivation uh, of converting the sentences into the vectors and the another important thing that we see is like you know most of the architectures that are available in machine learning or deep learning actually takes uh, input in the format of uh, in the format of values like you know suppose 0 0.2 or 0 0.1 0 0.3 0.6 so all these you know they take input in the format of these vectors so there must be a way of you know actually converting these words into the vector because you, uh, we cannot say you know if i am writing uh, you know uh, cat is sitting on my table so there is no way we can you know use this as the input to be uh, you know fed into the machine learning architectures so there must be some way of actually converting uh, this particular uh, sentence into a into a vector format so that we can use this vector format as an input to the machine learning and deep learning architectures so this is actually you know one of the most important you know uh, motivation of converting sentences into the vectors another motivation of uh, doing this conversion of sentence of or words into the vector is is in the case of sentiment analysis so if you are doing sentiment analysis for example if you are doing sentiment analysis on the tweets so so there are multiple tweets for you know for example some post so you want to do the analysis like whether this actually the tweets that people are doing on a post are positive tweets or negative tweets so you have to actually decide between the positive and the negative tweets. So what basically you want from the machine learning architecture is that your machine learning architecture should be a function f which actually takes input x and predicts the sentiment of that tweet which is y hat let us say. So what you are trying to do is your input here actually is the sentence. The input here is a sentence which is basically a tweet that you are doing for a particular post so what machine learning is doing is actually applying a non-linear function f onto the sentence to get to the prediction value so in order to in order to do this uh, using the machine learning obviously you know this x has to be in a format of a vector that's why uh, you know we need to convert sentences into the vector so that we can do this sentiment analysis and the second uh, motivation i can tell you uh, is uh, uh, in terms of the diagram so for example if you have some uh, positive tweets and some negative tweets and if you are you know able to convert the positive tweets into their corresponding vectors and if you are able to convert the negative tweets into their corresponding negative vectors so what you can do is you can plot that tweets here so let us say these are the these are the vectors that are corresponding to the positive tweets and these are the negative these are the vectors that are corresponds to the negative tweets so you can see here so it's a d dimensional plane uh, where you know each of these uh, you know crosses are basically a vector of dimension d cross 1 so you can see here that if the positive tweets are there so they are represented by you know uh, crosses which are white crosses and the negative tweets are represented by uh, yellow crosses so what happens is you know uh, uh, if you are able to group these vectors into separate groups then it is possible to learn a uh, learn a machine learning model which can actually separate these two tweets together so now if you have a new tweet if you can uh, write the, that tweet into the form of a vector then that tweet actually if it is you know lying in this particular area then you can say okay this tweet is in this particular you know uh, category uh, or in this particular cluster so this this actually is a positive tweet
so in order to do these type of analysis we have to convert our uh, sentences into the form of a vector so that we can do this type of classification so this is basically the motivation that why we need sentences to be converted into a vector format or sentences or words so next what we want to see is the these vectors actually next we want to see that these vectors what are the properties of these vectors in order to encapsulate the behavior of the statements like will these numbers which are present in these vectors are random numbers or will they be a special numbers which can actually capture the essence of the sentence so so we want to see whether the numbers that we will be putting here are these random numbers or will it be a series of some numbers which actually capture the relationship of these sentences so uh, let's discuss the uh, you know type of numbers that we want to feed in in this vector so that it helps us in doing the classification process easily so in order to answer this question let us have three tweets let us say r1 r2 and r3 when you read these tweets then you will come to know that this r1 and r2 let us say they are you know normally close to each other whereas r3 is not a r3 is not related to these r1 and r2 so if these tweets r1 and r2 if you read them and if they are close to you know uh, close to each other in terms of let us say liking that particular post so if somebody is writing looks good looks good and somebody else is writing great something like this so basically you can categorize that uh, you know these two tweets regarding that particular post are close to each other semantically actually if you see these uh, two words in that sentence they are semantically close to uh, close to each other because by you know reading that tweet uh, if one is writing looks good and another one is writing uh, you know some somewhere in the in the tweet as great then you can say okay these two people are actually uh, you know praising that particular tweet or you know they are liking that particular tweet whereas uh, let us say the reviewer 3 uh, if this person is basically do not like that particular tweet then he will write some ex other word like you know um, uh, bad or something like that so you can you know easily say that you know this particular r3 tweet is not related to r1 and r2 semantically as you can see it's semantically totally different one is saying it's a bad tweet other ones are saying looks good and great so uh, the motivation behind converting these sentences or words into a format of a vector is in such a way that the elements that are there within these uh, you know arrays are to be you know in such a way that in, it encapsulates the semantic relation in the sentences or words so Uh, if we want to write this uh, you know uh, in terms of english then what we can say is similarity between two tweets let us say r1 and r2 if the similarity between these two tweets is greater than this similarity between r1 and r3 or similarity between r1 and r2 and r3 as you can see here these these two are similar whereas r3 is not similar to r1 or r2 so by similarity here what i mean to say is uh, semantically they are similar in the form of language so semantically r1 and r2 tweets are similar but r1 and r3 are not similar neither r2 and r3 so if if this is the situation then your vector should be in such a way that you know the the elements of these uh, vector the elements of these vector that is this 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 whatever elements that you have in this vector is is it has to be in such a way that if you take the distance between the two vectors let us say v1 and v2 and these vectors v1 and v2 are corresponding to the tweets let us say you have r1 r2 r3 and if you convert them into uh, into in the form of the vectors then the v1 will be the vector corresponding to the tweet r1 uh, and then v2 is the vector that corresponds to r2 and similarly v3 is the vector that corresponds to r3 so basically what we want from these vectors is that the v1 and v2 if you calculate the distance between them v1 and v2 it has to be less than the distance between v1 and v3 so this is our prime objective actually uh, in the sense that you know the elements of the vector should be selected in such a way that if you calculate the distance between these two vectors which is let us say l2 distance uh, which is which, which is nothing but you take the distance between v1 minus v2 and take l2 norm of this so if you if you take the l2 norm of v1 and v2 it has to be less than the l2 norm of v1 and v3 so pictorially it is represented in the format that you have a vector v1 here and a vector v2 which is close to this 
that so that if you take the distance between these two vectors this distance will be less as compared to the distance uh, between v1 and v3 which is this or v2 and v3 so uh, our prime objective uh, in the case of uh, natural language processing is that how to convert actually your sentences or words into vectors in such a way that the that, that the elements of these vectors should be uh, should be such that it captures the semantic relationship within the sentences or the words this is our objective so in order to uh, you know solve this objective we have multiple such algorithms like bag of words tf idf word to vector so all these methods are basically trying to you know come up with the vectors which actually captures the semantic relationship between the sentences so we will see uh, some of these algorithms and what are the drawbacks of that in our next lecture so thanks for watching my lecture see you next time